Hi guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to a set of tutorial videos that will help you learn how to build a database backed API using Rust. In this first video, we're going to be setting up our database using a library called Diesel. Diesel is a safe, extensible ORM and query builder for Rust, and it helps us automate things like migrations and connections to our database. We're gonna create our project. I'm gonna just call mine API. And I want this to be a binary project, so I'll put in the bin flag. With our project created, we want to go into our cargo tumble file and put in our dependencies. First, we need diesel. This will be version 1.0.0. And I'm going to specifically reference Postgres because that is the database that I'm going to be using. We also will need to bring in diesel code gen. This will be version 0.16 and the features will be Postgres as well. And then I also want to bring in a library called dot environment and this will be 0.9.0. Now there is a reason why I am specifically referencing Postgres. Diesel supports SQLite, MySQL and Postgres out of the box and you can choose any of these three databases as well as a number of other databases for your backend. I recommend going with Postgres if you already have it installed. If you want to do MySQL or if you want to do SQLite you can choose those options as well but just make sure that you have them installed on your computer when you do that. The dot environment library allows us to create environment variables that we can put into a file and then read from our Rust application and we can use this to allow us to point our application application towards our database and I'll show you how that works here in a moment. With our dependencies we also want to install the diesel CLI. In this case I'm just going to install the diesel CLI with no default features specifically featuring Postgres. Now if you have the three major databases that I mentioned before Postgres, MySQL, and SQLite you can just run cargo install diesel CLI. But because the CLI needs access to the specific database libraries if you do not have one of the others make sure to choose the specific database that you want and put in this no default features flag as well inside of our project we want to bring in external crate diesel external crate diesel code gen and dot emv for both external crate diesel and diesel code gen we need to add the annotation for macro use so that we can use the macros that are built inside of these two libraries inside of our application we also want to specifically use dot environment dot environment and standard environment and then we want want to create two sub modules one called schema and the other one called models for our schema file we're just going to leave that alone for now let's go into our model file and actually build out the model for our data with this API I could have gone with a blog or any other kind of style I just sort of chose books because I figured they'd be sort of an interesting type of data to model but you can really make anything with this type of API and with diesel okay so we want to bring in diesel we want to bring in diesel prelude and of course a glob import on that and then we want to bring in diesel postgres postgres connection and then we want to make a structure for our data type because we're using books we're going to be calling this book and we'll have four fields in this we'll have an id field which will be an i32 we'll have a title field which will be a string and an author field which will also be a string and then we'll have a published field which will be a boolean now the concept is that we just put in the title and then the author of the book and then whether or not the book has been published and then our id will be for us to get our book out of our database and to put our books into our database. We also want to derive the queryable trait on this specific struct. This will allow us to actually use this struct to query our database. Next we want to run a command that will set up an environmental variable called database underscore URL and this will point to our database. So in my case my database is Postgres colon backslash backslash followed by the username which is Postgres and then the password which is also Postgres and this is at localhost and then the actual database name is API underscore dev and we're piping this into a .env file and you can see here that a .env file was created and it has our database URL environment variable inside of it. This will of course come in handy when we want to actually connect to our database and it's also very handy because it allows you to 
change your database on the fly. Next we want to run diesel setup. This will create our database and it will create an empty migrations directory that we will use to manage our schema. If you look inside of your application, you can see here now you have a folder called migrations. You've got another folder with a bunch of zeros and it has a down SQL file and an up SQL file. Now these are the files that you use to migrate and to destroy your database. Next we want to create a custom migration so that we can define the schema for our data. We're just going to be calling diesel migration generate create books and this will create two new migration files for us one for up and the other one for down and you'll see here that you'll have a new folder with a timestamp of the actual time that you created this migration. Now our down SQL file is meant to undo anything that we do in our up SQL file. So all we're going to do here is create a little drop command and this will drop the table that we're creating in our up SQL file called books. Inside of our up SQL file we'll create our books table. So create table books. Our ID will be a serial primary key. Then our title will be a non-null varchar and the same with our author. And our published will be a boolean that is not null and we'll default it to false. So F. We can actually run our migrations by running diesel migration run and you'll get a little message back that says running migration and then the migration name. It's fairly good practice to also run your down SQL file so that you can make sure that you can roll back any migrations that you make. And we can do this by running diesel migration redo. And redo will run our down SQL file and then rerun our main migration. This rolling back migration removes the table and then running migration recreates the table for us. So now that we have our migration we can use diesel to generate our table for us inside of our schema rs file. And we can do this by running diesel print schema greater than sign and then the file that we want which is source schema.rs. This creates a little macro for us. So it says table inside of it it has books and then it has the id which is an int4 the title which is a varchar, the author which is also a varchar, and then the published which is a boolean. The table macro creates a bunch of code based on the database schema to represent all of the tables and columns. Diesel gives us another macro in this file if we do not want to build our table macro the way that it was before. And this is the infer schema macro. This allows us to infer our schema based on our database. This will automatically look at our Postgres database structure on compilation and then create create the appropriate code as a result of that shape. For this application, I just prefer to use the table macro. If you have a larger set of tables and maybe different types of data, it might be in your benefit to use the infer schema macro instead. If you do choose to use the infer schema macro, however, just keep in mind that your application may not compile as a result of you not having your database set up properly. With our schema set up, we can now make some imports into our models file to to use schema books and then to also use schema books DSL which is the domain specific language and then specifically books and I'm referring to this as all books. We do want to create another structure inside of our models.rs and this structure is called new book. This structure will be the structure that we use to actually create a new book when we're putting a book inside of our database in any way. As such we want to derive the insertable trait on this and we also want to put an annotation for the table name that this corresponds with, in this case books. So our first struct will allow us to pull our books out of our database and our second struct will allow us to put books inside of our database. All right, so now let's build the methods that we're going to use in our API. The first method that we want to create is called show. This will allow us to query a single book by ID. So we're going to naturally have our arguments be ID, which will be an I32, and then connection, which will be a reference to our PG connection. And then we're going to output a vector of book. We can use the all books item that we brought in from our schema books, DSL books, to run a find method with the ID inside of it. And then and we use a load method to cast it into our book struct and we call our connection on that and then we have an error message that we throw back which just says error loading book. We go and we look through our database by our ID and whatever we get back we load it and then we convert it into a book inside of our Rust code. Next we want to create an all method. This method will allow us to query the database and just get all of the books. We're going to pass in our connection which will be pg connection and then we'll output a vector of book and this method will not be too 
few discs similar from our show method. So we'll just call all books. Then we'll say, okay, we want to order our books by ID descending. Then we want to load each book as a book with our connection as our, and then if we do not get them, then we just want to throw back an error that says error loading the book. Otherwise we want to put them all inside of a vector. Now we want a function to allow us to update a book by ID. This function takes in our ID. It takes in our connection, which is our reference to Postgres connection again. And we're also going to use a book, which will be of type new book. Inside of this function, we want to add a use declaration and we're going to use our schema books DSL. And then we want to reference our author, our published and our title field inside of our schema as A, P and T respectively. Naturally, we also want to destruct our book by the title, the author and the published so that we can gain access to these values. Then we want to call a function called update. So diesel update, we call our all books and then we want to find the ID. So this will actually look for the specific ID that we've passed through here and find that book. We want to set the fields inside of the book that we've pulled out. And what we're going to do is we're going to take A, which is our author field. And we're going to say, okay, this is equal to author, which is coming from our new book struct. And we'll do the same for published and for title. And then our result, we will cast into book. So this will get pulled out of the database and then it will get pushed back in as a new book. And then we'll have this is okay function to give us a Boolean value. So this will come back as true if we were actually able to update the book value and it will come back as false if we were unable to update the book value. Now, one thing to note about this particular implementation of this function is that when we do pass in a put request with the JSON, we need to pass in every single value of the book that we want to update. So even if we're not going to update, say the title, title and the published value, we still need to pass in the title and the published value if we're just going to be updating the author. Otherwise it won't work. Okay, so now that we've been able to update our books by ID, we want a way to be able to insert a new book into our database. This will take in a book which is of type new book and then our connection which will be a reference to our Postgres connection and it will output a Boolean like our update by ID function. And this function is much more straightforward than the one above it. We just call diesel insert into and then we reference books table and then we get the values out of our new book that we're passing in here and then we want to execute the sql on our postgres connection and then we want to check to see if the transaction was okay and if it is then we get back a true otherwise we get back a false i'm sure you guys are noticing something about the way that diesel sort of handles these queries the way that these queries are structured inside of diesel is in a very declarative way so the rust code that we're writing is very similar to the corresponding corresponding SQL code that you would write to actually create these queries. So now that we can insert a book, we want to be able to delete a book by the ID. We're going to pass in our ID and our connection, and this will also output a Boolean. We'll check to see if book show. So we'll call our show method up here and we'll pass in our ID and connection. We'll see if that's empty. And if it's empty, then we'll just return false. And if it's not empty, which means there is a book in the database with that ID, then we'll call diesel delete. We'll call all books dot find with the ID. So it'll actually go and find the specific ID and then it will execute the delete on our Postgres connection and then pass back a Boolean. Finally, we want to create a function that will allow us to look at all of our books by author. So we'll pass in the author, which will be type string and the connection, which will be a reference to our Postgres connection. And in this case, we'll pass back a vector of book type. Like our show and all methods above, we call our all books. And then we're gonna filter, call book author, cause we wanna filter on our author value. So we say author is equivalent to the author that we're passing through. And then we load those books as a book type inside of Rust from our Postgres connection. And if it fails, then we we want to say error loading books by author and if it succeeds then we'll get back a vector of book type just so that we can see if this is working we're going to put in some basic code here first we need to call dot environment dot okay and this will check to see if we have our dot environment file and then we'll go okay let database url equal environment var and then we'll call on our database url this will pull from our dot environment file our database url and put it into this variable then we'll create a connection to our Postgres database by calling PG connection establish on the database URL. And I'm just going to unwrap this because it shouldn't fail because I have the database running. And then we will create a book and this will be based off of our new book model. So we'll just have a title 
an author and a published. And of course, our title and author are both strings, so we need to use our string from method to create our strings. I'm just putting Gravity's Rainbow and Thomas Pynchon, and because it's a published book, we're going to make it true. And then we're just going to run an if block, and we'll say if models book insert book in connection comes back as true, then we'll come back and we'll say success. Otherwise, if it fails, then we'll come back and say failed. Okay, so running this application came back with success, which means this was added to our database. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about R2D2, which is another library, which will allow us to decouple our database from our request response cycle and make it so that we can have multiple users calling our database at a given time. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this tutorial, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night, guys.